Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. There is so much going on on the channel at the moment and around it. Um, the latest item is a mini hunt uh, by Jane Street that Simon solves in a video today and it took him over two hours. It was very interesting having tested it and um, spoken to Jane Street about some of the things I thought needed just a little bit of work. It was very interesting to watch Simon have a go at it and see some things that he found much more straightforward than I'd found, some things that he found much harder than I'd found. And uh, you will have the same experience, I think, if you watch him have a go at that. It was very interesting. Um, it was kind of New Year themed hunt and it is great for a new year. Now, um, what else is new this year? Well, us being in a number file video. So number file today released the second half um, on their channel of their filming of Simon and uh, him explaining first of all the the Fistamafel ring and then I mean today's video is very interesting too. Do check it out uh, on number file. We we do like those guys and uh, it's good fun. What else we got going? I mean, there's so much. We, we should be streaming at some point, although I'm not actually sure if that'll be this week. Now, it might be next week. Um, and on Patreon, we've got all the fun of the fair, our monthly hunt. Give that a try. There is a negative restriction in one puzzle, and that is going to matter today in the puzzle we're going to do today. Um, and also on Patreon, Simon solves the Cogito's a uh, new Rikabi roller coaster puzzle. It's brilliant. Give it a watch if you've got another two and a half hours to spare. I know, I know, I'm recommending things that take a lot of time. If you want to space your time more gradually, get our apps. They are available on the links under the video along with Sven Sudoku Pad and our merchandise. But the first link is to this puzzle, a debut by Lurkane, I'm going to say. And the reason I'm doing this is because we had a snow flurry here in the UK yesterday. And this puzzle is based on a snow flurry. You can see all the snowflakes falling in it. Uh, the rules are very straightforward, but the puzzle is probably not. Normal Sudoku rules apply. That's one to nine in every row, every column, and every three by three box. Uh, digits separated by a white dot are consecutive. So those two digits could be one and two or seven and eight. <coughs> all possible dots are given. So those two digits could not be consecutive. Give it a try on the link under the video. Don't know what we're gonna find. You can maybe judge from the video length how hard it is. I am gonna start now. Let's get cracking. Okay, so where is our eye drawn? Our eye is drawn to box two, which in which every cell is on a white dot. Now, there are three sequences here. How do I know this is a sequence? Well, if you imagine a digit in here, let's just pick a random five, then the digits either side of it must be four and six, and that's going to form an ascending or descending sequence. Right, and one must appear somewhere in this box, and nine must appear somewhere in it. That is a knowledge bomb from Cracking the Cryptic. But the point of it is that wherever one appears, it's going to be in a one, two, three sequence. Wherever nine appears, it's going to be in a nine, eight, seven sequence. The other sequence is going to be four, five, six, and this central string of characters is two, five, and eight, therefore. Okay, so this white dot is either going to have three, four. Since two, five, and eight have been used up, actually both of these white dots are interesting. They're either going to be three, four in one case, and well, they are going to be three, four in one case, and six, seven in the other. So one and nine in this row go in here. And this digit must be 2 or 8. OK, I think we probably have a decision to make in this puzzle. I'm now beginning to see this as a puzzle where... where we could get quite a long way through the puzzle without knowing where the high digits are and where the low digits are. I don't know. Let, I'll, I'll hold off on that, but we might be going to placeholder digits in this puzzle. Right, this is either 3, 4, or 6, 7. And this is a kind of U-shaped sequence of dots. So 
these two are either bounding the 3, 4 and they're 2, 5, or they're bounding the 6, 7 and they're 5, 8. So there's definitely a 5 there and we've got a 2, 5, 8 triple, which is a bit of a surprise. Ah, oh, now I'm beginning, well, okay, over here as well. These ones are very similarly, they're bounding the things. They're a 2, 5, 8 triple. Ah, oh, this one can't be 5 because there is a 5 in this 2, 5, 8 triple in the top row. So that is 2 or 8, and this is a 5. We get a digit in the grid. Now, getting 5s in the grid doesn't change my plans because 5s are kind of the pivot digit. They're not going to change whether you change high versus low. Like, if we, what I'm trying to say is, if we manage to color this, di this grid with the high digits in one color and the low digits in another, until we reach this one, we could swap them round. And I don't know when that one is gonna disambiguate the puzzle for us. It will do it at some point. Oh, by the way, this is now the four or six, and this is the three or seven over here. I can't make that call over this side. Now, I'm beginning to think about these as well. I'm wondering, well, if four, five, six was up the middle here. If four, five, six was up the middle, you'd have a four here and a six here, or the other way around. That four couldn't be next to three. And that six couldn't be next to seven. And actually, there must be a pair that's next to each other and has to obey that non-consecutive negative constraint relationship. Oh, that's really weird to think about. I'm not quite sure. See, I am very tempted to go placeholder here and deem that this is low and be prepared I'm not solving the puzzles. So I'm thinking, what if I, what if I put a four here? Because that will make it much easier to visualize what happens in the rest of the puzzle. Okay, I'm gonna try it and I'm prepared to backtrack on this, but I'm gonna put a four here. I know it's not necessarily right. I am prepared when we find out, say that it's wrong to swap all the low digits for their equivalent high digits to swap the four for a six and so on. But I don't know, I have to make a choice and this is gonna make it easier to see what's going on. So then we get a five, eight pair here. This is clearly a six, seven pair. This becomes a two. We know the two is connected to a one. That's a nine. The one may not be next to a two. The nine may not be next to an eight. I think this is gonna clarify how we solve the puzzle. And I might be wrong, but look, up here, we know that one can't be next to two because of the negative constraint. So one is down there somewhere. Eight can't be next to nine. Um, we've got three, four, and nine to fit in here, but you can't put three and four next to each other. So one of them is up there. You can't put three next to two. I mean, this is, it is weird, but I think this is a way of doing the puzzle that allows us to make some progress. This is six or seven, and I don't see how to tell which. The trouble is, if this then doesn't, see, I'm not allowed to use this one, by the way, because that, that might be effectively a nine in the version I'm doing. So I'm not allowed to compare that one and that one and draw conclusions because I'm using this placeholder method, uh, which we do sometimes, I don't want to say resort to, but we do sometimes use for clarity. Let me put it that way. Right, we've got a four cell sequence here. We've got a three cell sequence there. It's gonna be difficult to take these down the grid. That is the issue. This, this box is quite interestingly populated with snowdrops. Um, fine, I don't know, maybe, maybe this is just gonna falter. Now that's two or five. So these are either a one, three pair or a four, six pair. This digit cannot be a six because it would either be next to six or next to seven. 
So therefore this can't be a 4. Now, if that was a 3, this couldn't be 4. Uh, I don't... Oh, maybe it's impossible for this to be a 5 now. I don't know. No, I don't, I don't think that's something to work on. 6 can't be next to the 5. 7 can't be next... Oh, well, 7 cannot be next to the 6, given that that's 6 or 7 in the box. That's not allowed to be a 1. Oh, there is a 1 in one of these, so that's not a 1 in this version. That's not a 3. Interesting. This either goes 1, 2, 3 running downwards or 4, 5, 6 running downwards. So this can never be a 4, because either that's 4, 5, 6 or a 4 would be next to 3. Yeah, I mean, this does make progress quicker through the puzzle, even though we may know that we're not doing it the right way. 1, 2, 3 there. 4, 5, 6 here would have... Mm, no, I, I don't know. I think this may be faltering, so this might not be the way to do it. Ah, oh, it's interesting. This is a very interesting puzzle. I'm not sure I'm... Well, I am seeing some dots on the way down. If that was an 8... No, if that was a 5 and these were both even, then these would use up the other even digits and those would both be odd. And that's interesting, but it's not conclusive. There does... There might be some parity stuff... That's an odd digit, because all the evens are on dots here. That's un okay, I was going to say that's odd, to find an odd digit. I'm using the two different meanings of odd there. Then there is one even digit there. These dominoes, I don't know. <laughs> that's really weird. I just don't know quite how to, how to deal with the puzzle at all. If that was four, five, six, that would be one, two, three. This would be seven, eight, nine. Four, five, six there would lead to these being, well, they'd involve two and eight. I don't, uh, again, I don't see that we'd know what was going on. Um, goodness. Oh, five couldn't be next to four there. So, if this was a four, we'd have one, two, three here. We'd also have eight, seven, six, five. That would be a three, nine pair. Ah, this can't be a four. That's very interesting. If that was a four, we'd have one, two, three here. But we'd also have three here. And that's a clash of threes between those two cells. So that's not a four. Oh, very interesting. So that's a three. But that doesn't... It gives us a four-nine pair here, but it doesn't actually sort out anything else down here. Well, it says three is on the bottom rung. Therefore, one is on the top rung, and I could have worked that out because of the one in one of those cells. I didn't, but... One is in one of those two cells. Three is in one of those two. Two, four, nine, five, three. This is six or seven. This can't be one. One, three, five, two, four, nine, six, seven. It can't be eight. It is six or seven. If it was six, that would have to go three, two, one. This would go six, five, four. One, two, three, six, five, four. The six would have to avoid seven, so seven, eight, nine would run down the grid. So if that was a six, five, we'd have four and seven up here, and one... Ah, we need a nine at the top of the grid, don't we? We need a nine in one of those cells. So the eight is there, the seven is down here. And this cannot be the 7, because it will break with this cell. It will either be next to 6 
or it will be next to seven, which is even worse. So the seven nine is not there. Very interesting. So we found the nine eight seven. We're remembering we're still on placeholders. Now, we can't put six here. We could have six, five, four. No, we can't have four at the bottom. Four is at the top because of that. It's a one, four pair. This is a three, six pair, but seven can't be next to six. So we get this box filled. We're remembering we're still on placeholders. It might not be right. We get one and eight here. I can put those in because eight mustn't be next to nine. Then we've got a six, seven pair at the top that I cannot resolve. I don't think I can resolve all this stuff, but now, now we got 987, so we didn't have the double even pair up here, which would have helped here. Ah, oh, we've got the double even pair here. So this is a double even pair. This involves two and eight. These are both odd. Therefore, I can mark all of these as even because they're contiguous on white dots. This now, there's an even in there, that's even, they're even, this is odd, that's even at the bottom. The four evens in this column are the, the eight, the blue, and the two dominoes must have one each, so that's odd. Actually, I could have worked that out a long time ago from the dominoes in this box, didn't think of it. Um, there are going to be two evens on this four cell. Oh no, it's not a four cell. I keep seeing that as a four cell sequence, it's only a three cell sequence. Ah, but there's going to be an even on that domino and an even on that domino. So these two are odd, that's even. Yeah, this is a parity colour, isn't it? Now, where's one and nine in this column? They're in those cells, they can't be on dominoes. So, two eight possibility there. And these two are going to be a 4-5 pair and a 6-7 pair. We can't have 1 or 9. No, that's not interesting. These involve 2 and 8. Okay, this can't be the extreme 1 or 9 digit. Nor can this. That's very interesting. In this column, where do the one and nine digits go? They don't go here because they'd be in the middle of a sequence and that's impossible with one or nine. They don't go here because the orange... Oh no, this isn't a polarity marker, it's a parity marker. They might go here. This might be nine because we could put eight there. Oh bother, okay, one though can't be here and it can't be here because two can't be there. So one is on a domino with two in one of those positions. The other digits in the column are three, seven, eight, nine. Three must be in one of these two positions. Must be. The digit it's next to here can't be two and must be four. Um, and the other of these digits is a six or an eight. Now, if that went four, three, this would be two. What does that do? Not sure. Not sure which of these dominoes has a four on either. Uh, four and six. And two. Ah, this can't be a two because one and three are gone in column five. So that is four or six. This is five. This is odd. So it's five or seven. It can't be three. Does that do anything for this, which has a six or an eight on it? No, it doesn't say it can't be six. I mean, it nearly does, but it doesn't quite. And does that have to be nine? No, because this could be a nine eight domino. Four six, yeah, that would have to be a three seven pair. If this was a four six pair, that would have to be three seven. And these two dominoes would be a one two and an eight nine. That seems to work okay. This is much much more complicated snow flurry than I was expecting, I have to say. But it's clever, it's very clever. That is a one, three or a five, just that's Sudoku. 
That's me just desperate to put something in the grid. I mustn't use this one. That is not a relevant one because we might be about to reverse all our numbers. I don't know when we're going to get to do that if we if we are doing it. Um, four there, five, nine, eight, seven. Eek, I kind of feel like I'm not really understanding what we're looking at here still. So just need to have a little think. There's so few snow digits in these boxes. I have to keep working on the others. I mean, the negative constraint's all very well, but the positive constraint is much more helpful to begin with, and that's normal. Now, okay, four, five, six. We can't have three in these. So the odd digit could be one. I suppose this could be a seven, eight pair. Oh, one, and yes, in one case, there's a one, two, because three's in one of those cells. I'd forgotten that. Is it worth thinking about if this is six or eight, what happens to the sequence? Not really. Well, ah, it is actually. It is. If this is 6 or 8, and these digits are from 4, 6 or 8, this can't be a 5. So it's got to be 3 or 7. This one can't be 9. But this one could be. This one can't be 9 because the sequence carries on. So this will either be 6, 8 or 2 here. Now, this could be 9, but that would then be a 1, 2 pair. This would be 8. We'd have 8, 9, 1, 2. Does that do anything tricky? Not really. We nearly got that to be a 3, 7 pair, which would have been quite interesting, I think. 1, 2, 3, 4 is here, so the even digit here is six or eight. Ah, is that... I'm wondering, I'm, I'm probably missing something now with the negative constraint because I kind of think I've studied all the things that are possible with the positive constraint. That, that might be hubris. I mean, these cells are a 4-5 pair and a 6-7 domino. That, I mean, that, that's what they are. So this is either a 4-5 domino, and that would be 3 or 6, or it's a 6-7 domino, and that would be 5 or 8. That's far too many options. Very disappointing. However, right. If this was a 6-7, this is a lovely question. If this was a 6-7 domino, where would 4-5 go in this box? Can't go there by Sudoku. It would go here, and it would need a dot. That's no good. So that is the 4-5 domino. This is the 6-7 domino. This is now 3 or 6. We also need a 4-5 domino down here. Now, they could be on the domino. I'd, we need a 4-5 pair down here. That is not the same as a 4-5 domino. Because one of them could be on, on the domino and the other might not be. Although they can't be in these two cells because there's no white dot between them. So this one must be 4 or 5. This one can't be 6 on the other side of 5. Can it be 3 on the other side of 4? Then we would have 4, 3 here. That would be a 5. That would be 7. That would be 6. That won't work intriguingly. Right. For this not to be 4 or 5, the only way it can be is for it to be 3 with 4 there and 5 here. But that won't work. Five mustn't sit next to six, so this would be a five-seven pair, breaking that cell. So this is not a three. It can't be a six. It must be four or five as well. We've got another domino going on. I mean, 
a little unsurprising, but it's hard to prove. This cell, I want to say it's a three, but I think it could be two or eight as well. Four, five, one, nine. Ooh, can this be seven? Then this would go seven, three, four, five. Oh, this can't be nine. That's been obvious for ages. Ah, negative constraint. It's so hard to see. Nine, that's huge, I imagine. That can't be nine. This can't be eight. Now that's a three, seven pair, which I was very keen to prove earlier. Maybe it's not quite as powerful as I thought it was then, after all. Now, one of these two is an eight. We've got a one, two pair. Well, it's either this side in that order or that side in this order. And the other one is an eight, nine pair. Oh, 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 oh. I just ruled out that from being one because of this. I'm not allowed to use that because I could be going the wrong way round. I'm allowed to use that one, which, which is a deduced number. But this could be a nine, this yellow cell. I must remember that. It's very hard to remember. And that is a drawback of doing this system. Oh, look, there's a four, six pair. So two is the even digit on this um, thingy, this white dot. So two is not the even digit here. This is an eight, nine pair now. That is the two, one pair, and they're filled in. Right, come on negative constraint, do something for me. What's this? It's not eight, nine or four, six. It's not two, it's five or seven by Sudoku. And that's a pair. It sees that one and three and that nine, yes. So that's three, this is great. That is four, this is five. The constraint is obeyed, that's four. This is not three now. This is not four, obviously, this is not this is seven specifically. That is not two. We've got six, seven, eight, triple one way or the other there. Four, five, seven. This is a six, eight, nine triple with eight, nine on the white dot. That's a six. This is three, four, five. The four mustn't be here or there would be a white dot. So four is there. That's become an eight. Sorry, that's very obvious. This is three or five. And that's a three, five pair. Oh, and that three has also proved this is a one, two pair. That's a six. This mustn't be five because there's no white dot with the four, that is. This is a two. That now can't be eight next to the seven, no white dot. One and three here. I must not use this one to determine their order. I'm at least remembering that. We still haven't got to that one to disambiguate our plan. So actually, I'm quite glad we've done placeholder digits. This can't be a three next to the two. So the three goes there in the column. That is six or seven. One, four, five, eight, three. We've got a two in one of these cells. Well, we've got two, six. Oh, this can't be nine or seven because of the eight or six. So that's a two. This mustn't be a six, seven pair. We must have a nine amongst them. And that can't be a six, right. Six, seven, nine, but that can't be a six. Difficult to finish those off. We've got a three looking at that cell now. Wow, now can we get over to the left side? I'm not sure. Well, hang on, I am a bit sure. We've got four and five to place here. Now the only way they're not both on the dot is if it goes five, six, four. And it might. Okay, this is six or seven, this is, oh no, look, that is a naked nine, that's good. One three pair here. This has to be two or four and it can't be four, that's two. I'm not allowed to use this one, remember that folks. There's a two in one of those cells. One, three, two, nine, five and four. I still keep bumping up against them being in these cells. Now, what was this gonna be, six or seven? I was gonna mark that earlier. Oh, this one is quite limited, five or eight by Sudoku. And this one is a naked four. It sees all the other digits in its row or column. I'm not counting this one. 
which may not be a 1 in the version I'm doing. Now, that became an 8 because it couldn't be a 5 next to a 4. This becomes a 6 because it can't be a 7 next to an 8. Then we've got 7 and 5 here. We've got an even digit here, which could be 4. Uh, 7 can't be there. I can't believe we're getting this far into the puzzle. This can't be 7, so 7 is there. This is 2. That's 1, that's 2. Oh no! And we get to a 1 here, which proves that I've gone at it the wrong way round. Which is good in a way because it shows you that in the placeholder method you're then going to have to switch the digits. So what I'm going to do, I have to now assume this 1 is a 9 and I should be able to finish the puzzle wrongly. So that's a 3, that's a 5. I mean this is going to work apart from that 1. And then I'm going to flip it all round because otherwise I'm doing a partial flip on the puzzle. Look, I'm just going to finish off here because that's, that's the, what I've got to do. A man has got to do what he's got to do. Um, this is 8 or 9. It's 8, actually. That is mandated by the box and everything else. That's a 4-6 pair. The 4-9 pair. Oh, yes, this is a 9 masquerading as a 1. 4-9-4... Six. Okay, six is work. Now, it's going to say that this is the wrong solution. Well, if it would do if I click the tick. I'm not going to click the tick. I'm not claiming this is the solution. What I'm going to do is now reverse all the digits. So, let's get rid of all the nines. Uh, how do we do this? Colour all the nines and take nine out of those cells. Right, I'm going to colour all the ones. No, I'm going to remove all the ones and put them into the orange cells. I'm swapping ones and nines. I'm swapping, I'm going to be swapping eights and twos. I'm going to have to put the nines back later. Bother. I didn't think about this properly, did I? There's some way of doing this sort of swapping involving zeros. So I highlight all the twos and put zero in. I highlight all the eights and put twos in. Then I highlight all the zeros and put eights back in. That's how I should be doing it. Right, I highlight all the seven, threes and put zero in. I highlight all the sevens and put threes in. I get a three in the corner. I highlight all the zeros and put sevens in. Now I've got to swap sixes and fours. Fours, then I'm gonna to have to restore the night. Uh, that was not the way to do it. Put zeros in. Then sixes in the fours spot, fours in the zeros spot. Now I'm going to have to go back through all the... Let's first of all get rid of orange colour. Let's go back through all the blank cells, putting nines in, and this is the solution to the puzzle. And there may be ways to do that without using placeholders but it's a good way to do that sort of puzzle that the one is here to disambiguate the whole puzzle otherwise you could subtract 10 from every digit and it's fine as we found but once that one is there at the end of the trail as it really was this time in this snow flurry then it's quite a good idea to use placeholder digits and be prepared to swap them over that is not bifurcating, it is a placeholder technique. It is different, I promise you. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs> That's very entertaining. Thanks, Lurkane. And we will see you again tomorrow for more Sudoku fun. Bye for now.